figured, you know. Yeah. Andreas's cat will come running across. We'll be talking about totally inappropriate things. It's just how oh, we yeah. do it. It's That's, how we roll. Yep. It's always a disaster. Stay on the inappropriate. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> professional. Yeah. Welcome to the Dresden Files podcast. So we're here with Jim Butcher and James Marsters today to help us promote the law, um, courtesy of Podium Audio as well. Um, you'll see uh, some comments. Uh, they're doing a giveaway. Uh, you'll see that on Facebook and YouTube. So if you want to sign up for that, there will be links and instructions as we go. Um, the law literally just came out today officially, right? So uh, yep. we've already had fans in the comments uh, tell us that they've read it and they're excited, but we don't want to do any spoilers, nothing big if, if we can avoid that. So just want to do a reminder. We normally do a, a spoiler show. You know, we're usually the first ones that will read that sort of thing. Um, but this time, you know, because it's literally the day of, we want to give everybody their time to be able to read it, digest it at their own pace. So... Um, that being said, Jim, you know, we got to kick it off with you. What can you tell us about the law since it came out today? Uh, it's out. It's available. It's on Amazon. It's uh, uh, available on, on audio uh, and Subpress will will have a kind of a nice little hardback single uh, edition that, that, that they're going to do. I'm signing page that, uh, now. Um, but uh, the law is um, we pick up uh, just a couple of weeks after the end of the last novel. Uh, Harry's been kind of devastated and uh, is is sort of figuring out how to pick things up again. And and one of the things that he decides to do is there's somebody who needs help and there's just, you know, the city's kind of a wreck and all everybody's limits are, are everybody's at the very limit of what they can do to help each other. And Dresden hears about somebody who needs who needs, you know, his particular kind of help. And it's like, OK, maybe maybe it's time to get back up again. And, uh, uh, you know, so that's sort of. You know, we're sort of, Harry sort of dusting himself off and we're sort of doing an old school, you know, kind of a, a more hard boiled private eye story. Uh, uh, and I, I, I had a whole hell of a lot of fun writing it. So hopefully it, uh, it comes across that way to the readers, too. So his particular style of help, how many buildings burned down then? So. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's 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 hard to say on account of so many of them got burned down in the last book. <laughs> uh, we're still sort of we're still sort of playing in the wreckage. You know, so uh, 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 buildings are still burning, and it's kind of his fault. Yeah, it doesn't count yeah, anymore I, if he's uh, burning wreckage. The, the city's on fire was on fire, and it wasn't my fault. Yeah, <laughs> you should have used that line somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a fan favorite. Have patience. Right. Have patience. I was going to say we got oh, one coming up. <laughs> I mean, it only took so long for the anvil to come back. It's true. It's true. <laughs> right. Uh, Fair enough. So, uh, so James, we didn't get a, a chance to prep you for this, but usually when we have someone new on the show, we like to ask them who their favorite character and three favorite books are. Would you like to weigh in for us? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know why. I have a really fun time with Bob the Skull. Yes. Uh, Makes sense. I just fall into it. Uh, easily. Toot Toot comes to mind. Um, Thomas gives me trouble because he is he is so close to Harry. And when they have scenes together, I, I always kind of tense up like, oh, shit, how am I going to make oh, this I love work? You know? together, though. You do it so well. Thank you. <laughs> you don't see, can't, thank God you don't see sweat on audiobooks, you know. <laughs> um, I, uh, I was just blown away by the last two. So I'm going to take those two right away. You know, uh, I just love, I, after every book, I just don't know how Jim is going to ratchet it up again. I just don't know how in the hell you're going to get further than you got in the last book. And it seems to be that Harry is, is constantly becoming more powerful and the world around him is becoming more and more complex and dangerous and, and chaotic. And, um, and, the thing about those two books is they were also very personal and intimate at the same time. You know, uh, I just thought that they were, I just thought they were monumental, seriously. Um, and then I guess I would pick the first one I read, which is not the first, the first book in the series. Cause I kind of came in, I think it was, what was it? The fourth book or the fifth book in the series? Cause I remember we picked up those, those earlier books later. Um, but that's just a very personal thing because I, I feel like I, um, I was thrown into the deep end of a swimming pool and I had to figure it out. Like, 
like uh, I had assumed, like I, I came, I came to, to Hollywood thinking, well, I did a lot of theater. This film acting is going to be easy. And I came to find that the toolbox for film is entirely or com almost completely different than the toolbox necessary for, uh, for stage. And all the tools that I had spent my life learning how to, to get and to use were not applicable. And, and, and that, was a, uh, that was a panic and a learning curve, but also exciting. Like, oh, wow, there's a whole new, th whole new kind of acting I can uh, explore. Um, and then I had assumed that a lot of the tools for theater were going to be the same for uh, an audiobook. Because basically, you're just hanging words in the air. It, like in, in theater, your face is that big, you know, and in audiobooks, your face is invisible. So th there's not that big of a difference there. Uh, and some of that is true, but I was not prepared for the microphone being this soul sucking black hole that it is. Uh, in, in theater, you have the audience feeds you energy, the other actors feed you energy. It's a whole event and you end up being way more energized. It's like doing a rock concert. You're way more energized at the end of a performance than you were when you come into the theater. Um, when you do film, the other actors are, are feeding you back and forth. And so uh, it's not quite as intense, but you, you, you have partners. And when you do a book on tape, and maybe Jim can speak to this, I don't know if it's true for you too, but the mic, demands a lot and it gives you nothing and so uh i remember we broke for lunch and i was just, just felt like i can't do this this is i i don't have the energy for this i don't have the mental facility to to be as precise with my mouth as the as the microphone is demanding um and to be as emotionally available as the writing is calling for uh, and I went to lunch and I just kind of sat there and I was like, you can do this, dude, you can do this. And I chewed my tuna fish sandwich in my car and I came back in and the director was surprised that I came back. <laughs> and he said that, he said that a lot of you television actors, when you go to lunch, well, you don't come back and we hear from your agent that you quit and sue me if you have to. So thank you for at least coming back. And I think it's probably the high point of that book was that I just didn't give up, you know? Uh, so yeah, that was... I'm proud of I'm proud of myself that that I that I stuck with it and and uh, and just kept trying even though it was a whole new challenge that seemed overwhelming at the time I'll be honest. I think I can safely say for most of the fandom we're glad you didn't give up too. So um, really you know glad, some of yeah. your deliveries are are immensely emotional for us uh, as you know we're listening along with you. So um, well, that's because Jim's writing it. carries me away. You know, I mean, that's that's the other frustration is because I'll be like, really, you know, Jim is like doing his thing and I'm like lost in the fantasy. And then like, James, uh, the L was a little sloppy on Fatal. Can you go back for the oh. L on Fatal? Right. You, Jim, right. <laughs> and you're like, Wait a minute. I was just I was just about to cry. Like, like, how dare you interrupt <laughs> this reality? Uh, and, and, and then you go back for it. Um, and it is constant. And so it's, it's, it's like someone's throwing popcorn in your face, but they need that, you know, they, they, the L on fatal wants to be correct, you know? Um, and, and so it's very demanding, uh, uh, but, but delicious at the same time. I forgot the question. Uh, yeah, but I'm very glad that, I'm very glad that Jim didn't fire me. I really thought, I really <laughs> thought after the first book that he would have been like, you know, I, I love you on television, kid, but we, we need someone who can do this. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah. All right. So, uh, of course, the uh, the work is never done, right, Jim? So now that you've got another book in the bag, do we have any news about upcoming projects or anything like that? Uh, I'm 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 most of the way through uh, the next uh, steampunk book, uh, and after that, I'll get started on the next Dresden book, which is not going to be the one that I thought it was going to be. So that oh. that'll be for today, because everybody was expecting Mirror Mirror as the next book. Uh, where, where I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just stealing the concept from the old Star Trek episode. We're going off to a parallel dimension that's one choice different. And, you know, we're going to get to see how everybody could have turned out if, if, if things had gone a little bit differently earlier on. 
And that'll be a lot of fun. But then I realized, oh, wait a minute. I've just wrecked Chicago. If I go off to an alternate Chicago after, after you know, destroying it and trying to set it up for the rest of the story as kind of a, you know, kind of a darker place, um, it's just not going to come across as well. I need, some, I need some more time. And also there's all this personal stuff happening that I can't just leave unresolved for the characters, you know, stuff that they're, that they're going to have to face and deal with. Uh, so I'm going to the next book instead, I think is going to be called 12 months and uh, it's going to be about Dresden and it's going to be a bit about recovering from, you know, from uh, from horrible events, which uh, I, I think really just about everybody could use a, a how to guide for that after the past couple of years. And uh, uh, and also, you know, we're going to get to be doing a lot more of kind of the personal stories that are happening in Chicago. It'll be a little bit more focused on that. Um, Except that the personal stories are also involving, you know, Lara Wraith because he's got to go on a date with her once a month. He's got to survive a date with Lara, you know, uh, at once a month. Um, uh, so that'll be complicated. Uh, uh, but I, I'm going to have a lot. But I'm going to. I've been just looking forward to it, and I keep thinking of new things. It's like, you know, Harry should really see a should really see a therapist. But who can he see? Ooh, that's exactly that's just the right person for him to see. In this Leah, you right? Know, the very godmother. The oh, God. No. No, no, oh, no, no, no. This, you know, it's, it's, the, the, the key word there is human psychology. And I'm not uh, sure Leah really gets human psychology, you know, so much. I mean, she sort of she sort of understands if you focus here, this is how we jump. But uh, uh, I, I don't know that she would actually be a big help as, as, you know, reframing things for you, you know. Leah's resolution would most likely be, how do we make it into a dog? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, Everybody well, really, I don't dog. understand. You're so upset. Look, now you can now you can have all the women you want now that the one that you liked is out of the way. You know, right. I, mean, I mean that's sort of her sort of her attitude. That, that'll be her attitude. You know, and Dresden can just look at her like you don't understand. And she'll just be like, "No, you're you're just broken. Why don't you just function like an animal?" <laughs> you know. But I guess he's not going to talk to Bob about it either. Then. But. Oh yeah, well, you know, Bob's going to be involved. I mean, Bob's got a new monster truck to play in. Uh, uh, because you know we've got the that we've got the castle now, and the castle has to have essentially uh, it has to have a resident spirit uh, to run all the cool features and the, the whole operating system for the castle. And so Bob essentially gets to drive this monster truck around. He's having all kinds of fun with it, and you know other characters are going to be relating to Dresden differently. And he's going to and Dresden is realizing, oh wait a minute, I've got you know a lot more power than I thought. That means I've got a lot more responsibility. That means I have to start doing more than just what I've been doing. I can't just live in a basement my whole life. Uh, uh, you know, I've got I've got a community that that, that 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 is around me and people that are around me, and I've got to start taking that more taking that responsibility more seriously. Uh, and so we're going to be seeing a bit more of that from Dresden. You know, kind of Dresden the leader as opposed to Dresden the wizard. Uh, uh, and we'll, you know, I, I think that's going to be that's going to come into a lot more into the story as he moves ahead, uh, uh, which will be a whole lot of fun. I have a question for Jim. Do you mind? Take it away. Go ahead. Okay. Go for it. Do you feel guilty that you hurt all of us with the whole Murphy deal? Like, or does that keep you up at night, or or, or is it kind of like <laughs> I got him? You know, I feel terrible what I have done to my readers, and I apologize wholeheartedly for all the grief I. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, have you gone to <laughs> Oh, sorry. That's <laughs> I, I my inner supervillain, I mean, the, the reason I torture Dresden, it, it's it's not because I want to torture Dresden. He's fictional, he doesn't exist. I want to torture all you guys. <laughs> and they'll put me in jail unless I figure out a really creative way to do it. So 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 far this, this so far the series has worked out real well. Yeah. yeah, you remember how you're talking about how Leah knows where to poke and prod everyone? Clearly, mm. it's been inspirational on some. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you don't like have like, to be a sadist to be a writer, but it helps. You know, it helps a little. It helps. <laughs> well, because like I love a roller coaster, and you have to go down screaming in order to rise up cheering. And I wouldn't want a flat yeah, roller coaster. Yeah. I'd ask for my money back, you know. And and people would come would. and they say, "Why did he have to do that?" I'm like, "Well, it's a roller coaster. It, it it's going to hurt at some point." When I was a young writer, uh, my my writing teacher, the instructor, who taught me everything I needed to know, looked at me and said, "Here's something you're not going to like. 
The business of writing is the business of manipulating people's emotions. If you understand that, you'll do well in the business. If you don't, you won't. And 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 she was right. It made me angry. I don't go around manipulating people's emotions. She's like, yeah, but if you read a story, don't you want to have a villain that you hate so much you want to yell at the screen? Don't you want to have a hero that you're so behind that you want to cheer out loud for? I mean, isn't that the, the best kind of story? Isn't that the story you want to read? And, and I looked at her and said, yeah, absolutely. Those are the stories that mean the most to me. She's like, if you want to write stories like that, you got to learn to manipulate people's emotions. And, and th this is part of the writing and this is part of, this is, you know, part of the story craft. Here's how we do it. Here's how we tell the story. Here's how you get people into it and behind it. And, and that is, you know, that's my job. It's my job to, to make you hate who I want you to hate and cheer for who I want you to cheer for. And if I can do that, then I guess you'll keep paying me. Uh, yeah. uh, and I mean, that's, that's kind of how I see what I see in my job. It's, 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 I mean, yeah, I can just write, I could just write the story and we just, we could just go from A to B to C and so on. And we'd have that, we'd have that level roller coaster that's no fun. So, yeah. Uh, so, and yeah. You I, create a world that's truly dangerous if no one you love dies. It's, you know, unfortunately, yeah. 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 So, uh, Jim, now that you are, have been on the other side of the recording booth and you've had your own experiences, would you please tell us some of that? Like, was there a phrase that gave you trouble that you've learned that now you're probably not going to write down anymore? Yeah, I, I, I forget which one it was. I should probably, like, uh, all I have to do is read it out loud again and I'll stumble over it and know. Uh, uh, but yeah, there was a couple of different, there were a couple of different, uh, different points while I was recording and the director was like, Jim, stop. No, uh, we need you to go back two sentences. Okay. Thank you. You know, like that. And I'd be like, okay, try it again. Get it wrong again. Try it. You know, go a little slower, maybe sound it out phonetically. Try not to think of it as a word. You know? <laughs> and, and so now I realize, you know, James has, 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 co has come to me before, before uh, about some of the, some of my word choices. And uh, so now, I, suddenly, I, suddenly, I, I, I understand that I've stumbled over the. Yeah, go. I mean, go ahead. You. It's, you it's just one word, it. man. It's just one word, and I, th I think that you know, I come across this word, and I, my, my, my reaction is, I really should have paid more attention in college because they probably could have told me how to do this. But this is the word little, little. It's, it's <laughs> because, like, when you do little. The sides of your tongue has to have to aspirate the T to go from the T to the L is usually you're aspirating of the front of this technical, but it's hard for me to say. And and uh, and and you use it a lot and I stumble over it a lot. And I, I remember uh, one time um, just stopping saying, keep recording, but this isn't the book. Uh, this is a private message for Jim Butcher from James Masters. Jim, you are such a good writer. You're phenomenal. And there are so many beautiful words out there, so many wonderful words. There's minuscule, Jim. And how about tiny and diminutive? There's, there's so many words beyond little. Uh, how about we try all the words? Just, a, just an idea. And then, and then I, I got, I, the next book that came out, little was, as opposed to once a page, it was twice in a sentence. It was four times per page. It was all through the damn thing. And I, <laughs> and I thought, oh, wow, this is Jim's way. Because, uh, you know, it's all about me, which it's not. But, I mean, I thought it was. <laughs> and, and I thought Jim was just kind of saying, hey, buddy, why don't you uh, just read the books? I'll write them. How about, how about we stay in our lanes here? Stop bitching, you know. <laughs> that was the last note I ever gave Jim Butcher. It was, that, that was Intentional. That was unintentional that it came out that way, but but now that I've been on now that I've been on that side of it, and I did it to myself, you know, in the future, you know, like I'm gonna I'm gonna pledge right now the next book, only the next book, but the next book, I'm not going to use the word little once in the whole book. There can be 150 thousand words, and not one of them will be little. I, I I'm taking it as a creative challenge. I'm going to go forward on, on that. <laughs> But two books from now, you're going to call it Little Problem and every other one. Yeah. Right? <laughs> or Little Italy. Yeah, it's in the title or something. Mm -hmm. But next book, no. Next book, I'm going to try and be kind. <laughs> I'm not going to choose violence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want you to change a damn thing, Jim. I swear to God. Oh, thank you very much.
Yeah, it's working. It's so good. I would hate to think that anything changes because I'm bitching. <laughs> you know, it was, it was a more of a lesson for me. Of, you know, it's 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 my job to figure that out. You know, like, don't talk. <laughs> you make my job easier. Well, no, actually. We're paying you to do the job, so why don't you don't figure it out? <laughs> yeah, see, the thing is, is in conversation, and what I figured out when I was actually recording is that in conversation, I say the word little with D's, little. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, when you're, talking, and when you're talking to people, that's fine. In a regular conversation, you can get away with that kind of substitution. But when you're right, when the microphone is right there, it no, it, it can hear the difference between D and T, and it... it <sighs> And, and, and those, those audio directors, they know, they understand. <laughs> yeah, they'll, just, they'll just all this stuff and you're like, why? And they'll, they'll, well, I can get into the reasons and then they'll go for five minutes. And then in the future, you just go, okay, just tell me what to do in the future. And I'll, I'll just, I'll just shut up and listen. Yeah. 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 Like, like just in the same way that the camera catches a lot more of your face in a close up than stage does when you're that, the, the process of recording uh, reveals minutia that nothing else can. In the same way, the microphone does the same thing audially. You know, audially? Is that even a, a word? Um, it is for sound. It, it is so precise. Uh, yeah. It's a mother. Really. I mean, God. It's just, it's, it's, uh, it's pitiless, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get hungry, I mean, the, your stomach starts making noises and the mic <sighs> hears you have to stop your dramatic wait for your stomach to stop gurgling and you know yeah, or you or you just gave like the what you think is the best read of your life and they tell you uh your mouth was a little dry we were getting those tongue kind of things can you take a sip of water we're gonna throw that 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 paragraph away and you're just like that's the best acting i've ever done in my life oh my god <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <it's> <laughs> so james we're really curious do you have a process of getting into character when you're uh, about to record a book for specifically for Harry, for anyone else? What's your prep time look like? Um, I just read the book once and then get into the studio. Uh, there may be like, and while I'm reading it, if there, if there seems to be an accent uh, that I don't normally do, I'll go and do re I'll, 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 I'll go doing that. Uh, and get that ready but um words they have they they are they, hmm, how do you how do we put in words they words are giving you direction they they're telling you what they want how they want to be spoken and every every author has their own style but every scene has its own like they're 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 directing you as you go. And if you just learn to listen to that, they'll carry you uh, um, the way that they want to go. I don't know how else to, to explain it. So I, I just try to give over to the experience, almost like I'm an audience member as I am going, going through it. Or I'm just like entering a room and I don't know what's going to happen. Um, so that there's an immediacy to it. I'm trying, like I'm, like I, I'm. Tr you don't want to sound like. Uh, I'm sorry, but a lot of audiobook people, they always sound the same. And then he killed his best friend, sat down and cried. You know, and I just, you don't want to sound like that. You want to sound like someone who just sat down at a coffee shop and be like, dude, you are not going to believe what just happened to me. Check this out. You know, um, uh, and and so to to get there sometimes preparation sometimes really planning too much will fight that immediacy in the same way for film that like on stage you want everything to be planned out and there's an illusion for something happening the first time but but in film you want to actually be experiencing something, truly experiencing it for the first and only time and letting the camera document that event. Um, and so the microphone is as intimate as a close-up is in film. So it, it occurred to me like I, it, it would be best if I am having a real experience as I'm reading this that can be documented. And I think that that Sometimes you can hear that, especially in very emotional scenes, uh, because I am crying, 
you know, which is really hard. Like, and, you know, and then I pick up the nut. I picked up the nut. <laughs> oh, give me a second. You know, and you can't even get the words out anymore. And then as a man, of course, I'm all embarrassed that I'm, that I'm getting weepy. But then I'll finish the chapter and the male, the, 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 the male director will be like, that was a really good read. <laughs> <laughs> can we, you know, like I, can, I don't feel so bad anymore. Um, uh, so uh, that immediacy bumping up against the technical needs of reading any book on tape and or, or any audio book, and then also the fact that 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 Jim's writing. Am I going on too long? Should I shut the oh, phone down? No, am I you're cool? good, man. Okay, so so. <laughs> Jim's writing, it always, I always thought, wants to sound like um, a Humphrey Bogart movie. Or it wants to be kind of boiled down film noir uh, kind of aesthetic. Um, but Jim's, the, the world, of course, is way more complicated than, than a Humphrey Bogart film. It's not straightforward. There's, there's fairies and vampires and, and all sorts of stuff going on. And then on top of that, uh, the sentence structure is very complex, and the sentences are very long, um, which is exactly the opposite of film noir writing. Well, film noir writing is very short sentences, very direct, and trying to make that complicated language and complicated world still hit like a sim boiled down detective story is kind of the delicious torture of, of reading the books. It's, it's why it's so interesting and wonderful and, and fun for me. Uh, and such a challenge, um, but that it, I add to I add to how hard that is because I am actually trying to also have a human experience that can be documented uh, on the day when we're recording. Fascinating. Yeah. Thank God I, guess, I went on for a long time. If you would, no, if you would have been like, okay, no. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, we're wrapping up. This is yeah. <laughs> This this kind of this leads kind of leads into, but I think it's also kind of been answered. Is do you you guys do you ever s sit down together before recording a book? Do you, like discuss the themes and the tones. Uh, as if, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I I do my thing, and and then they send it off to James. They they do contact me to ask me about all the words that that are that that are weird and need to be need to know how to pronounce them. You know, and, and so occasionally and occasionally we, 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 we get those screwed up because I learned most of my words by reading them. So I don't always know how to say them. And then they come and ask me as though I know, you know, I, I've been educating myself the past five years or so. It's like, OK, wait a minute. I better know how to say all of these words. Let me get on. Let me let me Google it. Make sure I, I get the right. Oh, it does, sounds like that. Well, I'm just picking a different word. Heck with that. I, I thought it was pronounced a completely different way. You so know. on to that point, uh, I've, I've been deciding to learn Scottish Gaelic myself and lately, and so uh, the Titan's name is pronounced differently in Gaelic than how it has been recorded. And is that a decision that you made, or was it just because of how it's spelled? No, it's just because of how it's spelled. It was nothing that complicated, you know. Uh, okay, since it's, I, it's that, supposed to sound like course, Enya, but that, that, was that can the be a trip that I got, but I, but, but, I mean, I got the, I got... I checked the first three or four things that came up on Google, you know, so that doesn't necessarily mean anything's accurate. <laughs> as far as I was concerned, you said it perfectly. Everybody else who wanted Enya was, was my enemy. <laughs> Ethnia was, was the way to go. Like that's similar things of like, how did you figure out how the ick was pronounced? Like, I don't even remember how it's spelled, but it was confusing and changes. It's like, and then that's why it's just called the ick now. How, how did you even find that? Oh, uh, that was doing research on uh, Mesoamerican uh, folklore monsters. Uh, and and Nikikawax is an actual monster, although I, I, I changed it around a bit. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if, you know, I don't, I, I don't know if the Aztecs had some kind of copyright or anything like that. But, you know, just uh, I didn't want to just steal it whole cloth. So I, I altered it a little. Uh, uh, but, it, yeah, when you're, you're coming up with monsters, you want to get those good... How do I phrase this? Doctor Who does some of the best monsters that 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 get done in storytelling. It really does. Um, just sort of the psychological aspects of the monsters, where there's just there's simple rules that, uh, for when you're dealing with those monsters that you have to follow, where they kill you. You know, it's like 
keep your eyes on them and don't blink or bad things happen. It's like, okay, those are simple rules, but they're also impossible to follow. So you know something horrible is going to happen, uh, which makes it great for drama. And when you when, and you can find those all through folklore. You can find those monsters that have, you know, those simple rules. Well, you need silver to kill it. Uh, a stake through the heart while it's asleep. You know, maybe you, you, you have those rules that exist. And the, the really good ones that really appeal to people have been around in folklore for thousands of years. Uh, human psychology hasn't fundamentally changed since the dawn of history. So, uh, uh, so we've kind of got history as kind of a filter that lets you have, you know, like the really good, really cool monsters that are going, going to appeal to a lot of people. So I, I go back and I grab those and, 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 and I use those and I, I, bring the, I bring the cool monsters from folklore whenever I can because, you know, it's like getting the, you know, it's like getting the, the best songs of 1985. Of course, there's going to be a batch of good songs. You have, you've got, you've had years to filter it. You know, when you look back and say, what was the best music from that time? Oh, it's really good. It's like, yeah, but at the time you didn't know it was really good. It was just sort of the music that was going by on the top 40. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so if you have that perspective of history of, oh, 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 no, okay, Beethoven, he was amazing. You can prove it by all these different things that he did and by all these different things that have stood the test of time. And, and so that's one of the things that's, that's, that's where I go for a lot of my, for a lot of my monstrous inspiration is I, I go to history and to long-term stuff. There's a, there's an interesting tidbit that has nothing to do with your books, but can I, that, so a dragon, so this person was postulating that a dragon was an amalgamation of primal mammalian fear. So the, the, mm -hmm. the, the breath of a dragon was the, the stinking breath of a meat eating predator. That, so, so there's something deep in our brains that if we smell the, that rotting flesh smell behind us, we know a predator is close enough to, to grab us and we are going to flee. Um, the, the, the wings of a dragon, if, if a little mammal sees the shadow of wings near them, they know that they're getting swooped on. Um, God, there was more. But that it's just this idea that, 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 that we made this creature that embodies so many of those million year old voices in our in our in ourselves from when when we were little furry creatures millions of years ago yeah no that's i mean that's great that's the first time i've heard it for sure so yeah. um and, and you can kind of yeah you can kind of see it being a you know hodgepodge or kludge of all these different primal fears all rolled up into one thank you for making me afraid of dragons again so you know <laughs> well now they wear roman centurion armor and deal with little petty wizards so they're much more civilized <laughs> well until until 20 yeah yeah i mean we're not going through this without having a fight with a dragon that's just all there is to it you know i certainly I'm hope so not. excited so, no so when you dipped your toe now into recording, especially for Dresden himself, is there any particular um, swagger or character you wanted to uh, portray with him? You know, uh, or did you take some inspiration from James and just go, but I'm going to put my own spin on it? Oh, I just I just tried to do the voices the way I hear them in my head. Um, you know, Dresden is basically just kind of my everyday talking voice. Um, a little bit more, a little bit more Han Solo uh, to it. Just kind of that. I, I tried to put just that little bit of a drawl on his voice to kind of give that, that that cowboy impression without, you know, without without going full on Western accent. You know, uh, uh, kind of that Jack that Jack Burton voice. You know, where you just kind of take a little bit more time to, you know, and kind of have kind of a little bit more emphasis on those on those eyes from the you know from the Northern Midwest. You know, uh, uh, and, and so that was a lot of fun. Uh, Bob the Skull is, 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 he was originally an NPC in a role playing game I ran in college, and that was the voice I used for Bob the Skull. So, you know, just kind of just, it, 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 and it was all these, you know, kind of all these old characters. I wanted to do a British accent for Mab, and they wouldn't let me. Uh, my British accent was too Renaissance Fair. Uh, 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 I'm like, come on! I'm just doing this. I, I'm writing this as a summer project and just recording it for fun, and so the readers will enjoy it. And they're like, yeah, but I'm a professional in this business, and I have to deal with people like, all the time. And I'm like, okay, fine. So we wound up not doing an English accent for for Mab, and and I and I just whispered her voice instead the whole time. I just did Emperor Palpatine, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Emperor Palpatine. If you've been a girl, you know. 
you know you have to do Harrietta Renfair now, and Mad can show up and do her British accent because she's a leading character. Oh yeah, because then, then she'll be blending in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you blend. <laughs> That's fascinating. I, I I can't wait to hear your read because I, this is when I heard you were reading. I was like, oh, I can I can now hear what he had intended. Uh, um, yeah. And maybe make some adjustments. But oh. I, I, we're so far into them, I, I probably can't make too many adjustments for character. But but I don't know. I'm excited. That's interesting. You're fine, man. You're fine. I, 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 I'm, You're, I'm happy with your work, working together since like 2003 or something. It's been yeah. a while. Yeah. I just said something. By yeah. Comment. What's that? I just said something by now, I promise. Okay, yeah. If I wasn't... I just yeah, because I'm perfect. Yeah, we were asking, you know, like, do we have meetings before we read the books? And it's like, no. I mean, I'm sure if I was screwing it up too badly, Jim would have would have reached out to me or fired me, probably more on, you know. <laughs> um, but but yeah, uh, I don't know that we. I don't know that you've ever given me a note. Have you given me a note, Jim? No. No, no, yeah. do your work, man. I, we're, we're both over here creating. Have fun. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. I mean, and the best directors, yeah. if it's working, and don't give notes. They don't have to inject themselves. If it's, if it's working, they just let the actor go. It's only when there's, there's something yeah. that's not firing that you have to kind of get in there. Some directors will give you notes whatever's happening, and that's very, very frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you're doing, you're doing great work, um, and and I'm a firm believer in the fact that if you are not having a good time when you're working on your creative project, um, that the audience is going to see it. They're going to know it. That's going to come through. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't want to get in your way. Have fun. Uh, uh, you know, take chances and enjoy it. That, that's, that's why we're all here. Yeah. I think I can speak for 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 the fan base that we're all very happy with with James's version of of Harry and everybody else, so much so to the point that even Jim and Podium, uh, they they pre emphasized the 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 audio book with just so you know I'm just doing this one, James will be back. That's that's how the audio book starts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I made sure to include that uh, because no man, I know I I know your fans. Your fans are rabid. They would they, they they would need that reassurance. I wanted them to be reassured. You know, the coming That's next so dressing hilarious. book. Would... <sighs> because you should have seen me in my bedroom this morning because I was preparing what I would say. Because all I knew is that you had written something new and read it yourself. And I was like, okay, well, this I guess it's the end. You know, like, here's I my resignation I won't be <laughs> anymore. And I'm gonna be live streaming when i find out that i've been fired and i've got to i've got to you know kind of be grace grace gracious about it and and thank jim for for the wild ride that, that oh, i've been God. able to take God. so far you should have seen me then. <laughs> i don't know that i could do an entire novel i got through the novella and when i was done i was just like oh thank goodness but working with the director i became a writer so i wouldn't have to work with people yeah, so, uh, 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 <laughs> that's why I wanted to ask you, like, you're the chef. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, it was often frustrating because I'd be, I'd be working and they'd be like, okay, stop there. And I'd be like, this was going great. Why would you stop me there? You know, yes. but <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to ask you, like, man, you're the chef. Why do you want to wait tables? You know? <laughs> oh, because I wanted to try something else. I got tired of the kitchen, man. You know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you got to a while. Yeah, I just had a great Japanese uh, meal with the, the chef was also the waiter. Like he was preparing. It's one of those Japanese restaurants where you don't get to order anything. He he just decides everything that you're gonna have, and and I was like, I guess that's what Jim's okay. doing now. He's, he's just going to serve the whole thing. He's just gonna make it and give it to the people, and that's actually kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'll go back to the kitchen do my stuff, do my stuff again. But I, I wanted to. God. I don't think you had had anything to worry about there, there, James. Uh, I don't know how much you know about this. Like back with uh, with Ghost Story, originally there was a scheduling thing, so you couldn't do it. So John Glover yeah. did it. Yeah. And there, I will say, John Glover could do an audiobook very well if it wasn't the Dresden Files, <laughs> because that did the, the fan base was like very like this is not this ain't it's not James. We don't like it. <laughs> yeah, they, they yeah. contacted yeah. me. I was. It's 
I was in um, I, I was in Lithuania doing a, an Apollo Eleven TV movie, uh, playing Buzz Aldrin, and they and they said, you know, we want you to do the the next uh, dress, and I was like, kick ass! I, but I'm filming right now. We have to wait, well, whatever it was, two, three, four weeks until I get back in town. And by the time I had finished that, I got cast as a cowboy in Romania. And I, can you stay in Europe and 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 film this? And we contacted, uh, I guess it was a penguin. Uh, and and said uh, you know James is going to be busy for a while longer. And they're like, well, we've got a deadline. We're going to have to move on. And uh, I, I I really credit uh, the fans for 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 saving my job at that point because if Glover had killed it, and the fans would be like, oh, he's much better. You know, I we would you'd be talking <laughs> today. Yeah. If you have to be fair to him, he did kill it. It was very good. It just wasn't you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was just the flavor. That's well, everybody got to head candidate that Harry was dead, so he sounded different, and then they moved on. Yeah. There you go. I, 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 I feel proprietary, though, because I, I still haven't listened to his read of the book because I, 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 I kind of feel like they're not my babies, but I'm the babysitter. So, like, you know, like, oh, they, you have all the diapers. They, they, they want... This is kind of food is better at noon. Uh, oh dear, you know, like <laughs> that's a good, that's a good, that's a good metaphor. That's a good metaphor. I like that. Uh, that yeah. that's kind of how kind of how, how I felt when they handed me Spider Man for a novel. It's like okay, Spider Man's not my baby, but I have to be very careful with him, and I love him to death because I've been watching, I've been, I've been watching him for a year, you know. So, uh. uh but yeah, so writing that Spidey novel, that, that was a lot of fun, but it was also, you know, a lot of responsibility because I wanted to be careful. And I got offered a chance to write Batman and I turned it down um, uh, because I'm not as big a Batman fanboy and I couldn't have given the proper level of devotion that that character requires, you know. Uh, but Spider-Man, I was all over Spider-Man. It's like, oh yes, I, I had every issue for, for 10 years, you know. Uh, he, he, you know, when I saw the Spider-Man movie when it first came out, you know, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, it was like seeing an old friend from high school made good. You know, that was kind of the, the same sort of feeling I had. There's Spider-Man up on the screen. That's awesome. He was great yeah. with the band together, you know, like that. But. You would, I have not read this book. What's it called? Damn it. I want to read uh, it. It's called uh, The Darkest Hours. Um, and it's, I used one of Straczynski's villains from the Spider-Man series. And I just made them, made him have three of them instead of one. And, and, you know, it's Mary Jane and the Black Cat, and I can have the rhino come and have tea on Aunt May's couch, and that's a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> I just had a really good time. You know, I, I got to bring up a couple of things about the Spider-Man and, Spider and the rhino, because they're really, they're sort of parallel characters who just made different bad choices, you know, and and, and the rhino wound up being kind of this, you know, kind of this perpetual loser, and Spider-Man's a hero. Uh, uh, and writing that from the rhino's point of view was a lot of fun. Uh, wow. Uh, because he doesn't really see any difference between himself and Spider-Man. They both they both got the costume. They got stuck on their bodies. They they both went into professional wrestling as their very first move with superpowers. You know, uh, uh, but you know the Rhino winds up a, a ridiculous hero working for you know tin pot dictators and stuff like that, or a ridiculous villain working for tin pot dictators. While you know friendly neighborhood Spider-Man stays in New York. So, so what is the principal difference between in 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 their character that led them to those such such Different paths. Spy, their motivation. The rhino. The rhino wanted fame and fortune and glory. And Spider Man wanted. Uh, you know, he started off wanting revenge, and then shifted his motivation to handling his power responsibly. You know that he had a responsibility to use his power well. Uh, uh, you know, which is, does not explicitly come up, but which is pretty much pretty well demonstrated with the characters in that in that story. Yeah, I have my next book. I'll be on an airplane soon, so I'm excited. <laughs> so this question is kind of for both of you, but we'll start well out with James this time. But after you guys are doing your recording sessions, do you ever find that you're stuck in character? Do you ever go order coffee as Dresden or anything? <laughs> no, uh, no. I uh, I tend to shed characters. I guess it's because I come from stage, you know, you, you don't really, it's the method, uh, method acting that really wants you to just sink yourself down in the character and just be that character. Um, 
the only character I ever did that with was Spike. Um, and that ate me alive uh, because Spike was put through such uh, pain in the end of that series. I fell into a, like a clinical depression. Um, uh, Spike was getting revisited by all of his prior victims uh, at one point as ghosts. And so to do those scenes, I was, I was dredging up everything I felt guilty about in my life and then beating myself over the head with it all day to get into, the, in, into that frame of mind, which like no, no therapist would tell you that was a good idea, you know? No, and, they would uh, not. Sure. They would not. Yeah. And, but it sent me into therapy, you know, and which is why I think I'm a happy person now. So it, it all turned out great. Uh, but I kind of came to the conclusion that, that the, the method is probably better for film than television because in film, you're just sunk in for a few months. If you do method for television, you're sunk in for years at a time. And that, that can be dangerous. Um, uh, but no, I, I, don't, I don't sink in in that way. It's just the, the technical need is so immense that I don't think it would be possible, at least for me, to absolutely lose myself in the way that that you do for for film, because technically on film, there's there's there, it's not as technically demanding. It's just demand, demanding emotionally and, and as far as how honest you're willing to be, how vulnerable and exposed you're willing to be, um, and that's a big challenge. Uh, uh, but but technically, it's not it, there's not as much technical demand on you as, at all in film. Mm. Mm. Well, for me, um, I, I always have the impulse to order coffee as Dresden, and I suppress it so that I can get along with my fellow humans. Uh, but uh, yeah, like every lippy thing that comes to mind, you know, uh, uh, whatever I'm out, you know, I, I'm always just like, no, no, don't say it. Just order, just order your French fries. You know, don't don't make a comment on how on how their voice changed from from one person to another in between in the middle of your order. You know, it was a shift change. Don't joke about it. They don't need that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't always work. Sometimes I'm sleepy or I've, had, or I've had too much caffeine and then I have to start lipping off to somebody. And usually it goes very well. They're very good natured. And occasionally I, I stick my foot in my mouth. And that's, that's the peril. It strikes me that it would be a much bigger problem for you, Jim, than me, because these characters really are alive in you. You know, you were... They're coming from you. They're parts of you. Whereas I just kind of put them on like clothes for a little bit in succession. Yeah. I have to say oh, one of the hardest. Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I just make them up. Uh, you know, I, I, I write them down. I, I start off with D&D &D character sheets with my characters and kind of, you know, kind of get to know them that way. I occasionally roll random stats for them. So I'll have a vague idea of, of, of where they go in the story. You know, um, the, the hard part are the little moments, um, you know, the little bits and pieces that are small things that came from my real life, you know, um, you know, bits of painful bits, stuff about, um, you know, about I lost my father when I was 20 and it was a major, you know, it was a major thing in my life. So writing about Harry and his father, writing about Harry being a father, you know, um, those that are difficult. I mean, it's, it's not difficult to shake off, you know, it's not difficult to shake off, uh, 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 you know, the character, you know, after, after I leave and, you know, after I'm done writing and going somewhere, it's difficult to shake off sometimes the emotions that I have to call up you know, during the character stuff while I'm working on the art. Um, because if you don't, you know, I mean, you can be as technical as you want and as logical as you want when you're putting your art together, and that's fine, and it's very helpful. But also there's a point where you kind of have to just throw yourself into it. You kind of have to give yourself over to the creative energy, I suppose. Um, and at that point you have to trust that everything that you've learned has become such an instinct that you can use it without thinking about it because all you're really thinking about is is this moment and how to convey this moment to the audience um and at and at the end you know you can be as analytical as you want you can go back when you're done and brush over it as much as you want which is the advantage i have that that james doesn't um but at the same time, while you're putting it together, you have to you have to be feeling that you have to be feeling you know that character's desperation, their 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 hopelessness or their determination, and you know that that can be hard. 
you know, that can, that can be rough. Do you ever get the, the sense that the, that the characters are writing themselves? I, I've, I've talked with authors that start to feel like the character is whispering in their ear and they're not even writing anymore. They're just listening to the dialogue that the person is saying. I'm against that point early in my career, and I'm too proud to give it up. Uh, so, so for me, it's I, I look to add what they're going to want to do. Um, uh, uh, but yeah, they're, the characters can be insisted on, on doing stuff sometimes, and I, I occasionally have to go, no, okay, I'm going into your backstory and giving you a fear of dogs so that you will behave the way I need you to during this scene, and I'll, I'll call up their profile and actually add it in. You, know, you have to uh, discipline your character. There. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I, can, I, can, I, can write new, I can write new bits of personality in for them when I need to, but I've occasionally had to do that because it's like, no, this character's not acting the way I need, need them to act, and 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 then I realized, oh, they're not motivated to act the way that you need them to act. You need to provide that motivation, and so it's like, okay, well, we there's this whole chunks of this character we haven't seen yet. I can go back in and add in some new things, and and you know, and, and kind of have that kind of have that deeper basis of understanding for the character, but. It stems from the very practical thing of no, I need you to not open that door in this scene. You know, and, and, and the, the mental gymnastics I have to go through to keep the character from doing that obviously indicates that yes, the characters are writing themselves, and I'm not handling it very well. I'm just, I'm just sort of like this beleaguered babysitter trying to keep all these kids under control until mom and dad get home. Is what it feels like sometimes, you know. <laughs> like, is Bob the Skull like one of the worst that you have to control? Oh, no, actually, he's easiest because I know all of his motivations. They're very simple. I mean, it's, he's got those prurient, you know, those 13-year-old motivations. So I can get along with him. He will do things that are, that, are, that are inconvenient to me. But mostly I just go, you know what, let him be, let him be offensive. Let him be, you know, let, 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 him, let, let him run his mouth. You know, that's kind of who this character is. Just let him do that. Uh, uh, but, but, yeah, no, it's characters, it's characters like Murphy was always was always running off and doing things on her own. Particularly, um, uh, uh, Mab was always doing stuff on her own. Butters got real uppity for a while, um, but uh, uh, you're better off. You're better off sort of going along with those forces, you know, those creative forces, rather than struggling against them. So, you know, I just try and kind of redirect. Just try and channel a redirect direct them rather than rather than just flat, flat out say no you know so when my when, I, when a character is acting up I, I i usually take that as an opportunity as an opportunity to stop and look at my story and say okay this character doesn't want to behave let's talk about why let's let's sit down with that character and their therapist and, and find out what you know why they're what, why they're motivated that will go in a better direction and and you know i can i can sort of use that momentum to, to build more story um Lots of yeah, times, I, you know, little things that I did correct a mistake in story later, you know, so. Yeah, like, like I, they're what I call the deep voices. Like, you, you'll, you'll be in rehearsal, say, for a play, and um, an actor will make a certain choice, and you're running the scene, and then you, the, the company comes back to a table, and we talk about what just happened and what we want to keep for performance and what we want to not keep for performance. And sometimes the director will say, Oh my God! How did you come up with that choice? That that links back to the first act. It links back to the theme of the whole play. It motivates everyone perfectly. How did you come up with that? And the and the actor invariably just goes, I don't know. It just came to mind. And and I have come <laughs> to believe that there are, there are parts of our brains that are working creatively that we're not consciously aware of, and and decisions are made. Um, if you can, if you can access and give over to that, that, that become genius, that you're not even having to plan and your brain's just kind of doing it, you know? Um, and, and it, it always seemed to me that when, that when characters are starting to take over, that is kind of happening, um, that the deep voices are speaking anyway. So essentially James, you're yeah. the fun uncle taking yeah. them out for ice cream and you bring them back sticky to Jim. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
a little worse for wear, but not wounded irreparably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Speaking of the, the I, bump. I really think that. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, I, I really think that human instinct is really just, it, it's our brain adding a bunch of things up that we didn't consciously notice and put and drawing conclusions uh, uh, and then feeding them to us. And uh, whether you're, whether you're, you're operating in, in other places or whether you're operating artistically uh, instinct is, is very important to, and always listen to your gut. Yeah. It's like, what is, it's not aphasia, but it's when, it's when you experience things, um, like some people experience sounds as colors. And there's synesthesia. A, there's a, sy yes, synesthesia. There was a story about this guy that had, that had synesthesia, and he experienced arithmetic visually. And he wasn't a mathematician, but you could ask him any mathematical problem, and he would just look up in the air and go, two, four seven, nine, three. And he would be able to solve it because a one for him was a yellow streak, a two was a blob of red, et cetera. And he would just read off what his brain was giving him. And I, and, and I just took that and just think, my God, our brains are amazing. We just don't always listen to them or we, we don't have the facility to listen to them. And, and as an artist, I am, I'm constantly trying to find a way to give over to that and just trust that. Yeah. So for the future of the series, uh, is Justin going to be having more legal issues, run-ins? Is he going to keep his new friend around for future endeavors and problems? I love that new character. I just want to oh, put that yeah. in there. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the new guy. Uh, yeah, that was another character that just stepped up and said, I'm going to be part of the series now. And I was like, oh, uh, okay, I guess I guess you will be. Uh, uh, it's, Dresden's, it's Dresden's attorney uh, in, this, in this book, um, or in this novella. But uh, uh, yeah, th th there, will be, there will be greater problems with that in the future. Um, Wonderful. Uh, uh, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to watch my cousin Vinny a few more times so I understand the American legal system. You know, but... <laughs> great. No better example than that. Such a great movie. <laughs> Talk to lawyers, and they go, "No, that's actually it's highly accurate. It's actually a pretty good representation of the legal system." Like, ooh, you know, that, that's nice. Yeah. And on Mason, it... that's true. It's like Spinal Tap for rock musicians. We wince when we see that because it's all freaking true. It's all of that stuff is actually <laughs> real. We're just, oh my god! Yeah, yeah. You weren't supposed to tell people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, so you've already told us some things about the uh, how you're going on the Cinder Spires. Do you have any supposed possible timelines that you want to mention to us right now, or do you want to keep that closer to the chest? Uh, I wish I did. I don't at the moment. Okay. Um, uh, I'm working on it. No, no writer gets to write things as fast as they want to. They only write things as fast as they can. And uh, that's 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 kind of where I am, you know. Uh, uh, I mean, if if I could write four books a year and just turn them out one after the other, and and, and they would be great, and everyone would love them, I would absolutely do that because it would make me a lot more money, and that'd be cool. But uh, uh, as it is, I mean, I've got to I've got to kind of do the work that I can do, and and so that's what I've been doing lately. You right. got to hit up standards right. for this for the clones, like that's aliens. Is it aliens? Yes. Oh, I thought it was yeah, aliens that he just says attached to typewriters or something. Uh, let's see. I have got one hard lore question I just can't let go of because of the stuff that you've shown in this novella of the law of, of Bob's new monster truck castle. Who did Marcone buy the castle from and what did he pay for it? Oh, uh, Marcone, Marcone did a service. Uh, he got it. He got it in. He got it in Scotland. And he did a service for some locals to get to get it, and that's all I'm going to say about it. But it a service. I, I mean, obviously, time. obviously, obviously, we're short on gargoyles, so we'll be needing some of those. They'll they'll show up next book. Fantastic! I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be using pit bulls as my model for gargoyles. You know, now that now that I have a pit bull, uh, they would they would just be perfect gargoyles. They really would. So. <laughs> Alrighty. We are at an hour. Do you have any last minute thoughts, 
thoughts, plugs, or questions? Before we go on to hour two, you mean? Yeah. I mean, definitely. So, uh, I, yeah. Uh, oh, go for it. I just, James, I just want to say to you, James, I just want to say thank you so much for how careful you've been with my characters, for how respectful you've been with the material, for the effort and the energy that you've poured into it. I mean, you've obviously, you obviously have poured your heart into it and it shows in your work. I listen to you read, and I, I, I and, and and I laugh at things that I that I didn't that I didn't know were were going to make me laugh, that I didn't know were going to be funny. But that you will put you will put your own wry wry re, reading on on the words and draw the humor out of them that I didn't even know was there. And it is so refreshing to me to get that out of my own work that I'm often so familiar with that it's hard to listen to because I have gone over it over and over. And I just wanted to say that you've done a really good job. You've done well by me. Thank you. Wow, I'm I'm super embarrassed right now. Like, like I really hold authors in like you're kind of like gods in my mind. And so like I really, really, really will take that to my grave, Jim. And I'm gonna shut the hell up right now because I <laughs> wow. Do we have a recording of this? Um, yes, yes, this, oh, yeah, we recorded okay, this up on our, our channel. Um, I, I would like and, to wake up to that every morning. Yeah. Um, no, I, 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 uh, I don't know if this is something you can thank a man for, but I'm just, so, I'm grateful that you're so talented. Um, you amaze me. I, 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 I cannot, I have written like little comic books or treatments. I have dabbled in writing if on, only to know how hard it is, how much thought goes behind getting a structure for a story, only that, you know, and then yeah. filling in from there uh, a credible journey of that just, th there is so much mental work to creating a world that, and, and creating an engine that clicks. Um, and then ab above that, just, there are writers that have that something happens every few seconds, something terrifying, something interesting, something funny. Very few writers can, can get that going with, with uh, enough rapidity that the thing starts to sparkle and bubble. And, and you're one of those writers. And, and, and I, can, I, I can't think of a whole lot of others off the top of my head. There are, but there's very few. And I am forever grateful, and I seriously don't know why you asked me to write these books, uh, to, to read these books, uh, but I'm really, really grateful that you did. And I'm, I'm really grateful that you allowed me the time to figure out how to do them uh, very well, because I, I, I think I was just saying that uh, before we started, uh, we, were, we were all in this room, uh, together before we started, we, we let the audience in. And I was just saying, I, I only feel like I really got, I've only gotten there. What, I'm only hearing, when I hear back what I've done with the, with, with the book, I'm only n just now satisfied. In those last two books, I feel like, okay, that's what the words were trying to get me to do. And I just couldn't do them. I knew that I was trying to get there and I've just gotten there. So I'm kind of excited about the future because I, I feel like I'm finally able to do it right. But nice. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you both of you for everything that you have done that you produced that we have enjoyed very much and spent quite a lot of nice. our lives on uh, dwelling on thinking on putting a lot of tinfoil on. Um, and thank you for joining us today. This is delightful. Uh, to be able to have you uh, both here to see both of your sides and your perspectives. Thank you, Podium Audio, for helping get this put together. And for everyone who's listening, don't forget to check out the link for the uh, the 17 posters that are going out. I think you can still just get into it if you're listening to this live. And then the posters will be sent out to people shortly. Um, I think that's it. Thank you so much, both of you. Hell sure. yeah. So good to be with you. Nice to see you again, guys. Thank you so much. And you. Yeah.